I want to talk about one of humanity's greatest fears, soy. Will soy turn you into a not-so-manly man? Will it cause the dreaded man breasts? And also, will it turn you into a soy boy? These are some of the great fears, but worse than that, people are actually afraid that it will cause cancer. So what does the research show? Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And you know, I was looking at some videos on this. Now, I've known about the research, I've looked into the research, but as I delved into it, the actual scientific studies and comparing them what what people say, I had to do a video on this. And you know, I was listening to a, a popular doctor and he said the standard things. The standard idea about soy is that soy has something in it like estrogen. It's called phytoestrogen. Phyto means plant, plant estrogens. We know that women who have higher levels of estrogen is associated with them having higher levels of breast cancer. And so you can imagine that if eating soy increases estrogen levels in women, could it also increase their chances of cancer? And if it does, well then boy, it should be avoided. And does it also make men feminine? We're gonna look at the research on this. Well, let's start off with the cancer. Here's a study on higher dietary soy intake appears inversely related to breast cancer risk. This particular meta-analysis is looking at 18 cohorts and 13 trials that were done looking at people and their intake of soy. And so we're talking about study after study after study after study. And what they tell us is that intake of soy, a uh, higher consumption of soy, is inversely related to levels of cancer, meaning higher amount of soy, less cancer. So the idea that the estrogen or the phytoestrogens in soy increase breast cancer rates are actually, well, it's just the opposite. That in reality, we see that study after study after study, I don't know of any studies that actually show that just normal consumption of soy actually increased breast cancer rates. Now, you could eat an insane amount and you might have some trouble, but it's standard consumption. Uh, you would imagine that people in Japan would have very high levels of breast cancer, some of the aging countries, but that's just not what we see. So in this study, they did something intense. They gave people like seven to 18 servings of soy a day. That would be like probably whole pound blocks of tofu every day or, or near a gallon of soy milk a day. Very few people are consuming that amount. And um, over consuming anything probably isn't a good idea. And so there's something called insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1. Higher levels of IGF-1 are associated with higher levels of cancer. And what they discovered was, is that if you, if you eat that much soy protein, it is likely to cause cancer just as much as eating meat. So, so yes, if you eat, you know, like a pound of tofu every day, or if you eat like a gallon of soy milk, it's just as dangerous as eating meat. So is it dangerous? Yeah, maybe at, at, at least it's on, on the same level of the uh, level of carcinogen as you would have in meat. But in general, I don't know anybody who consistently eats that amount of soy, and Asians do not eat that amount of soy. So eating somewhere between three to five servings is probably about where you wanna max out. Five servings of soy, according to the research, is about where you wanna max out when it comes to this. Actually though, just like we said, they found that eating standard amounts of soy actually lower cancer rates. You might be thinking, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. So it may not cause cancer at normal human consumption levels, but what about the man breasts? What about turning men into very feminine characters? What does the research actually show? Well, what the research shows is they took rats and they fed them soy. And what they discovered was that these rats became more infertile. They were less fertile than they were before. And so that settles it. Now we know that you become infertile when you eat soy. There's only one thing that troubles me about this study and that it's, it's a rat study. What actually happens when you try it on humans? You see, sometimes things are done in animals that don't pan out to be the same thing in humans. Well, the good news is they've done study after study on this already. So we already know what it does in humans. 
Well, first of all, the first study was what we would call a snapshot in time, where they just took random people who were at an infertility clinic, and they discovered that certain men who were eating more soy had lower levels of sperm. And so you say, well, there we go. You know, just like the rats, same thing happens in humans. But the researchers even said, well, we're not really sure because it's, some of these men were heavy and overweight. And when you're heavy and overweight, you in general have lower levels of sperm count. So was it that these guys were more overweight and they tried to go on a better diet and so they were eating more soy? And so, and so it wasn't the soy that did it. Maybe it was the overweight that did it. The only way you would know for sure is if you did an interventional trial where you actually took people and you you know, had them not eat soy, and then you had them eat soy, and then you'd find out, hey, does their sperm count change? And uh, guess what? They've done it, so we already know the results of this. Here's a study reported in the journal Fertility and Sterility on a randomized crossover intervention trial. So what they did is they did three different interventions. They were to consume for 57 days milk protein isolate, then they would stop that, and they would have a washout period. Then they would switch over to a low isoflavin diet for 57 days. Then they'd stop and have a washout period. Then they would switch over to a high isoflavin diet for 57 days. What ended up happening, there was no statistical change in the semen and sperm count when eating the soy. So when actually put to the test, they've discovered that eating soy, even high amounts of soy, does not make men sterile. Well, that's good news, or there probably wouldn't be many people in some of the Asian countries. But lo and behold, there are plenty, and so they're not really struggling over there. And it's because the research shows that this does not negatively affect sperm count. But what about a meta-analysis where you look at multiple studies on this subject? Here's research on clinical studies show no effects of soy protein or isoflavins on reproductive hormones in men results on a meta-analysis, so looking at multiple different studies. And so what does it say? The conclusion is the results of this meta-analysis suggest that neither soy foods nor isoflavin supplements alter measures of bioavailable testosterone concentrations in men. So what did they find? They found that soy does not lower testosterone levels in men. So the whole soy boy, the whole man breast, all of these things are a great story that we might learn about from the dairy industry and those who promote it, but not according to actual research. You say, Chad, but there are studies in the rats. There certainly are studies in rats. The only trouble is rats are different than humans, and their digestive system processes things differently than humans do. So I get it that sometimes people study rats, they study animals, and they say, oh, this could happen in humans. But then if you try it in humans, the study with animals only gives you an idea if it might happen. And then you test in humans and you may find that it's totally different. And that's what they find when it comes to soy in humans versus rodents. There's a vegan bodybuilder by the name of Brian Turner who he actually wanted to test it himself. So he did 60 days eating a pound of tofu every day. And once again, I don't suggest that you do that. I think very high levels of almost any food can be unhealthy that used in moderation and they could be beneficial in moderation. Did you know you can die from water? Drinking several gallons a day, you know, multiple gallons a day of water can actually kill you, so we should give up water, right? No, that's ridiculous. So things that are healthy in moderation can be detrimental when you have an, a crazy surplus of them. So this vegan bodybuilder set out to try it himself, Brian Turner did, and so he ate a pound of soy every day for a month. And he's a bodybuilder, large guy. And what did he find? He started off, his testosterone levels were 596 nanograms per deciliter. And after a month of doing this, did he become a soy boy? Did he become weak? And did he grow man breasts? The answer is no. His testosterone shot up to 698. So he shot up over 100 points by overconsuming tofu. You say, oh, that's just a nice anecdotal story. And sure it is, but we've already seen that the research, the meta-analysis that's already been done shows that it does not negatively affect testosterone levels. So if you would give up soy because of its potential estrogenic effects, which actually are positive from soy rather than negative, what if there was another thing that people were drinking? So people started to move over to soy milk, many people did, 
and are terrified, and so they would drink regular dairy milk. But what if the research shows the exact opposite of what soy does for the body takes place when you drink milk? Actually, soy has a benefit. What happens when you drink cow's milk? Let's look at the research. Here is a study on exposure to exogenous estrogen through intake of commercial milk produced from pregnant cows. And the conclusion is the present data on men and children indicate that estrogens in milk were absorbed and gonadotropin secretion was suppressed, followed by a decrease in testosterone secretion. And then they tell us sexual maturation of prepubertal children could be affected by the ordinary intake of cow milk. So the research seems to be clear, right? That drinking regular dairy milk from the cow lowers your testosterone levels and may cause trouble to children, whereas drinking soy milk doesn't cause the same trouble. This is fascinating because it's the exact opposite of what is being taught. And so all over the internet, you'll still hear the same thing. Don't drink soy milk because it'll raise your estrogen, cause cancer and, and make you a soy boy and these kind of things. But interestingly enough, the very thing, the very uh, industry, the milk industry would love you to believe that soy is so detrimental because of its estrogenic effects. Yet the exact thing that is being promoted is milk does exactly what they're claiming the soy does, though the soy does not. And so let's go back through a little history for a moment. Back in the 1970s, in places like the Philippines, they began to think, hey, we could be making soy milk and we could begin to spread this, market this around the world and make a good living off of this. And so as they began to do this, the dairy industry in places like the United States began to be nervous. They, oh no, uh, this is competition and competition. You don't want that in business. And so you began to get these negative perspectives of soy and this pushed on into the 1980s also. And, and you can imagine they, did, they didn't want anybody else having any kind of a corner in the market. They had always told everybody, you know, milk, it does a body good and all these kinds of things. And, and then you look at the research and when you look at many different cultures, actually uh, the Caucasian culture is one of the few cultures in the world that can actually even handle dairy. Many people have lactose intolerance, uh, especially other cultures outside of the Caucasian culture. Many of them have dairy trouble. And so uh, this, this is just something that's known around the world. In certain places of Africa, people would send over to them dried milk. They called it over there white man's poison because many people there actually struggled with lactose intolerance. Long story short, this seems to be something that the dairy industry would actually love to promote, but it's not based on solid scientific research, unless you are a rodent, then you might wanna avoid that. If you have some rodents and those kind of things and you wanna make sure to keep them healthy, help them to avoid the soy. But for you and your family, eating it at moderate amounts are generally safe and actually help lower levels of breast cancer in general in those who consume it. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. God bless and have a fantastic day.